money, Jordan Bell fur. Stacking penny stocks while I'm flipping these birds. Sipping on Ciroc, trip them up with the words. I done popped the molly and I think it's be my third. What is going on, DJ Nation? Kenny Kim here bringing you another Fantasy Golf Generates podcast this week for the Houston Open. As usual, I am here with everybody's favorite Canadian, Tyler Tambaline. Tyler, what is up, my friend? He's going to wear the same clothes every week to this pod or what? Yeah, man. So so last week I wore this Caps, this Caps hoodie, right? It's my favorite Caps hoodie. Um, and they went 3-1 and one this week and got into the eighth playoff spot. So I will be wearing this hoodie until the Caps are eliminated from whatever, either the regular season or the playoffs. I'm thinking about going to the game tomorrow against Detroit, which is a battle for that final spot, that eighth spot. Uh, so, so definitely getting a little hype for these guys because there's no way this team should be in the playoffs. Did you go to so, any of the games previous to this recently? Well, I went to that one. I missed the pod to go to one. Um, I don't want you to break the superstitions here, right? If you if you got to wear the hoodie, you might not want to go to the game. No, yeah, no. I, I actually wore this hoodie to the game, and we won that game four uh, zero. I'm trying to remember what, who we played. I was hammered, so I don't really remember, but we won. Um, and so that's what it comes down to. So I'm gonna be wearing this every week. Okay. All right, let's hope for your sake we will. Before we get into it, I want to remind everyone very quickly: the show is brought to you, presented by ShipItNation.com. You guys can go check it out. Another huge week. For the nation, go to at Ship It Nation on X. You can see it there, the full pin post. Retweet it, post it, whatever you want to do. By all means, go check it out. You can use the code Mayo to get 10% off. Buy in now, you'll get in through the Masters. The majors are coming, man, so we got a lot on the go. But, Kenny, Peter Malnati week, your boy. I know you had Cam Young outright. 40 years, they said. It's been 40 years this, since you've had this many second places without a win on the PGA Tour. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I think it was Colin Montgomery. Had six. Did he, Colin Gary, ever win on the PGA Tour? I don't know. I don't know. Well, he's one of them with six. And the other one was Briny Baird with, with six runner ups. So in the last 40 years, those are the guys who had six. No one's had seven uh, before their, their first win. So yeah, that one uh, definitely hurt with the Canyon outright. I think it was the first time I might have been on Canyon. So like, I felt like what everyone's been feeling. All his whole career. Uh, I don't know what he was really doing on that 18th hole. I mean, because at that point in time, they were still tied, um, I think. Uh, I, uh, what's his face? Malati hadn't made the um, birdie yet on 17, but he hit it right. close. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I, don't, I, I mean, I, if if the birdie was made and, and, and Cam Young knew that he was really tight, okay. The driver makes sense then, because then you got a birdie to win. I can't fault him for that. But if he didn't know of what um uh, what Malnati was doing, and you know he might not have. Um, I mean, why not break out the three wood? Just hit it in the fairway. You know, I mean, the thing is, it's like a four hundred forty yard par four. I mean, he could hit his three wood three hundred. He'd still have a wedge into the green. You know what I'm saying? So, but. You know, if he saw what Malnati did, then the driver makes sense. Um, and, and, but I mean, man, it just to just to come that far and then just and then the shot he hit the 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 approach shot he hit from where he was wasn't bad, right? Right? I mean, like he was like left by like the food trucks, and like he had like a gap on the on the right side of a tree where he had to put a little bit of draw on it. Now, it didn't draw as much as he wanted to, but he still hit it on the green. He had a green in the regulation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Insane shot, putting. to be honest, with everything on the yeah. line. Was there. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it was a great shot by him, really. Um, and then the three jack from there was just super disappointing. Yeah, I think it was um, over. What, I mean, it, it probably felt like it was over. He had the quote after, talking about having to drive home with the kids. He kind of knew he was dead. Like, it was it was over. But I think to your point, like you said, even if what even if he knew – what Maldonado did. I think I saw someone comparing it to like Cam Champ at the Sanderson, maybe the second time he won it or whatever. I remember he went driver off on 18. People like, what are you doing? But he was up enough strokes. You can go in the water on that hole and yeah. still probably come away with the win. Like he's like, I'm not changing my game plan now. Where I think, like you said it, the game change the game plan could have changed for Cam there. Cameron Young, I'm talking about this Cam, where it was like, man, just get a birdie the best you can to put the pressure on. Maybe he thought driver was the best to do that. But like you said, kind of just put it out there. 
play, you've been playing good. Just put it up there. Give yourself a chance. If not, at least you make par and hold your own. Force it on Malnati to have to find it coming through the snake pit on the way home. Like I, I just thought that was it. Again, not you know knocking him. Great week, but I do remember this. I'm not sure if you recall, but we talked about it in the past. So the week that Tesori was jumping bags, we talked about it on this show because I have a guy that's like buddies with him, and he knew. He sent me a text. I was like, ah. I'll run with it, see if it's legit. Like, if it is, we'll see. It turned out to be legit. Tesori was hopping on the bag. The same guy texted me when they split, because obviously you guys all know Tesori was off the bag very quickly, or pretty quickly. It was like, uh, you know, what did he say about him? It was almost like Bryson-esque. You remember the saying about Bryson back in the day where it was like he's either going to be, uh, you know, not top 10 player in the world or he's going to be in a straight jacket somewhere? That, yeah. was, that was kind of the setup. It was, uh, basically it was saying, like, Cam Young doesn't listen. He, him and his dad just want to go their own way. It's going to be that way, and they're going to get there. They're talented enough that they think they're going to get there, but if they don't, it could go really bad. It has not gone that way. I'm not saying that. I'm clearly, I almost won. I'm just saying, oh, man, it has to be a pretzel in the mind. Like, down? I forgot. Uh, shoot. Uh, they were talking. Like no name, right? Yeah, who were they talking about yesterday? Um, I thought they mentioned the, the broadcast, like but... I mean, Caddy's super important, in my opinion, especially nowadays. It's sort of like a team competition. Look at Wyndham Clark. Right, I mean, people talk a lot of shit about his putting setup, but I think part of the reason why he's such a great putter is because he has his caddy lining up his putts for him. Um, you know, I, I know people disagree with that type of play, but you know, that's where golf is right now. It's almost a team sport. You see Greller and Spieth chatting it up all the time. You see these guys, you know, basically, you know, you see fucking uh, what's his name, Fitzpatrick's caddy, like not give him clubs and shit. You know what I mean? No, you're not playing. You know what I'm saying? You need someone like that sometimes uh, on your bag. And, like, you know, the, the big rag on Rory uh, is, you know, he has so much skill that he can win events without a good caddy until it comes to majors. When the pressure's on and you need a, a good teammate to tell you, you know, not to do this, do this. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, you know, whoever the fuck Harry, whatever the fuck Rory's buddy is. Who's Harry Diamond. Caddy, yeah, he's not going to fucking tell him. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, sure, you're like, do you're your like thing. A porn star name or something. Like, here, yeah. you're like, yeah. here, do your thing, Rory. Uh, thank you for the ten percent and the millions of dollars that you've made me. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's important shit, in my opinion. Uh, and I think that's something that Cam needs to adjust. Obviously, it's not working at the end. I mean, his talent is good enough to be a winner, to be second place. But to get you over that hump, you need something. And obviously, he needs something to get over the hump. Seven runner ups is like crazy like without a win you know what i'm saying like like justin ray said shit's never happened before right in the last 40 years it's yeah. never happened before um so i think he, i think something has to happen right there i don't know who his caddy is right now but i mean like even in that even on 18 it didn't seem like the caddy was telling him much right um and then you know other, so let's move on other things that happened you had that drop by uh Malnati, which is a perfectly legal drop you know, I mean, like, if you or I were sitting, were standing on a sprinkler head playing golf together, you know, at the Muni, which the course this week is a Muni, uh, playing the Muni, right? Uh, you know, we're going to drop, right? I mean, it's even we would do that. I mean, the pros are definitely going to do that, especially if it's going to give them an advantage. Now, you can you can argue against the rule itself. Yeah, sure. Dumb rule. Definitely a dumb Yeah, rule. you can argue against the rule itself, sure. How I think you should, I think it should stay in the type of, like, if you're in a rough, you should stay in a rough. Yeah. You can move I think it to that's the left. A good rule. You can move it to the right. You can move behind as long as you don't move it closer to the hole and you stay in the in the area you're in. I think that's yeah. how it should work. Like yeah. everybody's gonna take the break and it's perfect. We're not arguing. It's I'm not. Uh, I'm not bitching about Monati taking it. Of course, take no, no, no. Of course, he, everybody would take that. Just it, it's again back to the same rules of like the fairway divot. It's that bad where it's like everyone does get stuck with a fairway divot if they hit it and have to hit it out of there, so it keeps that fair. But at the same time, everybody should be allowed to move it left, right, or behind without improving their their um, distance while improving their lie just to give everyone the fairness to that because it's kind of a shitty thing. But from the sprinkler head that you're already getting there, it should be even Malnati said it. If you're watching the broadcast, he said, I just want to make sure you're here because it feels like a very fortunate um, situation for me. And they're like, no, you're good. You're good. He's like, okay, I'm going to yeah, take yeah. that then. When the rules guy came, yeah. yeah. Malnati even knew, like, Please. They're gonna look good. <laughs> you know? he, by, he won by more strokes in the end anyway, so it's kind of like a true ball don't lie. Like he still got it by two, and uh, yeah, the shot on seventeen was incredible. The interview after, by the way, for like just anything like that for a grinder 
from where he started to where he is now to what the ups and downs he go through, talking about the dark times, his caddy, his wife, and everyone that stood by him and all that. I know that story can come out every week, but that to me is the the one thing that you just love to see when you get this unique winner of a guy like Malnati. It's his second win, but it's been years. And so it's like you get a little bit deeper insider track to it versus when you see Scotty and Rory and those guys win, as exciting as it is for the game of golf, because it's another topic, but that, you know, you're going to get the same sort of answer every time. Like there's different stuff they can talk about. There's different things going on in their life, but you hear from them all the time. So to get an outsider talking about it like Maldotti, that was very cool. Saw him emotional going through the motions, but, um, you know, another just disappointing for PGA like that. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, people said like, oh, it sucks for the fans, but if you're playing DFS or gambling, it don't matter. I had sweats on Saturday night going into Sunday. Like it was not super exciting. Like Keith Mitchell's up by two. You got young. And I mean, at that point, Xander wasn't even what in the mix. What the fuck happened to Keith Mitchell? There has to be a name for that. You know, full Keegan, first round leader, missing the cut. Spieth has done that before. First round leader, missing the cut. What do you do when you're up by two strokes going into the final round and finish outside like the top 25? <laughs> I mean, there's got. To, I guess that's you lose your mon- You lose your moniker of killer, Keith. I can yeah. promise you that because it was no. Okay, no, no, no. He still open. finished seventeenth. Yeah, because I think he buried a couple at the end, but still, like he was he one eagle. stroke away from being outside the top twenty-five. After all wow. those bogeys and doubles, he threw an eagle on there. I did want to get your take on one thing though, just to wrap it up. I guess and anything else you have, but like Cam Young. 68. I know it's like people are going to be shit on this guy, but there was talks of it. We were talking about it in our Discord. I saw other people on X talking about it. Like, he needed a 66 in the end to get in the playoff with yeah. Malnati. So, like, he shoots a 68. He doesn't... But everyone's going to remember 18, though, Tambo. That's, that's what everyone's going to remember. But he couldn't... In the end, that's my point. That's what's kind of interesting about it. He could not close on 18. He could have made birdie on 18, still loses by one. Again, there's butterfly yeah. effect and this, that, and the other. But my point is... I think the narrative like, would have been completely different if he buried 18 and lost by one. Then it's like, yeah, uh, for sure. That's why it's we're talking about. But I'm saying that is what's an interesting little nugget from it all is that if he birdies 18, well, we probably shit on him less. And it's probably, you know, whatever it is, what it is. But then it's like, it'll someone, don't you think people just go back to the next hole? They just go, okay, well, he did that on 18, but he needed to do this on 12 or whatever. Like it just... It feels like unless you get the win, you're getting all of it, and maybe rightfully so when it's this many times. Xander, we just talked about it. I, I saw the best tweet. I forget who it was. Maybe it was Axis on Twitter, our guy. Like I, Somebody posted it was hilarious. It was like, it was. It said Xander should try playing like this when he's in contention. Yeah. And stick out of it. Like he goes Incredible out. Incredible final round. Right? But Incredible. It's like, it's yeah, made me a shit ton of money. I will say that. Yes. Like, I, you know, I, I actually had a winning GPP week and a winning cash week. Nice. Uh, I bet like two hundred ten dollars on GBPs. I got back like two thirty five. All right, so what? I went twenty five bucks. I'm taking a cash lineup was fine. Stupid Sam Burns, but uh, he missed the cut, but still easy cash with everybody else making the cut. Uh, and the and the five is six, and the six is six combined were like less than twenty five percent for most tournaments. Yeah. And and cash that's cash. It was a little bit higher. Like 27%. five is six won the two hundred K too. Oh, really? So, yeah. yeah. Was, uh, Peter Malnati needed like the perfect storm, needed the 0.3% Malnati win with a five of six. It had Sam Burns in it. But uh, just saw, by the way, too, bro, spoiler, just a little spoiler alert for this week. Sung Kang just qualified, got in on the Monday queue. Oh, nice, I don't remember. Nice. When's the last well, time? You know, okay, here's the thing. Um, I don't go about this in my course write-up because there's not that many Koreans in the field. But a shit ton of Korean golfers live in Houston. So, like, you know, KJ Choi is, like, the godfather of Korean golf, right? And he posts in Houston. That's where he lives. And so a lot of Korean golfers, especially ones that don't speak English very well, uh, aren't adapted to American culture, they come and live around KJ uh, just in the beginning. I think I think Siwoo did it. I think um, Sungjae even stayed there for a little bit, even though before he moved. Uh, Sang Moon Bay did it. Like, there's a lot of guys uh, that live or have lived in the Houston area that's Korean. Um, a huge Korean population there as well. So everyone feels at home. Also, the airport at Houston has direct flights straight to South Korea. So so very, very highly populated Korean population there. Uh, and so there are going to be a lot of Koreans that, you know, sleep in their own bed. I think KH Lee lives there, um, stuff like that. So I didn't go into it this year just because there wasn't any top-tier Koreans in the field. But, you know, if you're looking for some scrubs, 
that could be something that you think about. Um, now, just uh, before we move on, um, I did have the Camden each way, at least. At least I had the each way. Nice. Uh, so, so I broke even, basically, uh, in gambling. So that helped. And I didn't realize that Bazee now finished ninth. Uh, I had eight places on him. So that actually makes me a little bit more bitter. Than Welcome I was. to the each way world. I know you've been in it for a more. minute now, but that is yeah. that's how it usually goes, yeah. is that you got no, they, five places, realize. six. You got eight places, nine. How? I don't know. We got some old heads reappearing. Ryan Moore looked real good. Billy Orschel looking real good. Billy Orschel, one of my favorite plays this week. Um, so that's the only I, I enjoy the tournament. I think underdog fantasy really helps uh, when you watch it because I don't play showdown. Okay. Right. So I, I used to, and I, I won like a bunch of showdown GPPs when it first started, when like nobody knew what the fuck they were doing. And then now I can, like the few times I've played in the last two years, I mean, everyone's up to date. Everyone knows, you know, and they're balling out. So I was like, I don't feel like wasting on what I'm going to go stick with classic. Uh, I mean, a lot of times classic and betting, you, you're, you're like out of contention pretty early. Like, you know, it's, it's DFS and it's also, you know, outright gambling. Some weeks are just going to suck. Um, and so a lot of the times when that happened, unless the tournament was really big, I'd sort of, you know, not really pay attention. But now with the underdog, uh, the daily pick I mean, I'm focused on golf uh, every day of the week. So that's one cool thing uh, about underdog fantasy. Make sure you use promo code Mayo, get a hundred percent deposit match um, on, uh, 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 up to a hundred dollars on um, underdog fantasy. It was, it was a tough fall. Uh, we, this. Not, not only was it bad, Names at the top, and I'll, I'll just, I was going to talk about this. So I was uh, brought up because you just spit it there, but you couldn't even follow. The app was broke all weekend. So oh, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. was horrible. Uh, our guy, Sundog Monkey, Martin was there. I know he wasn't happy with this, but I'll address it because he's a friend of the pod. Like, man, he was like saying, like, I'm not sure what people don't like about it. It was bad. I like you. It, that's the problem is when you have Burns and Speeth miss and JT and M and Finau play like shit. And Xander was way back until he wasn't on Sunday, which is classic Xander stuff. But man, that is just not, I mean, you said it the week before, and there was like people copping out on this now that even the players was down like 500,000 plus rating, like, like, uh, views. And it was like, oh, St. Paddy's Day weekend. And I thought about it and we were talking pre-show and I was like, wait a minute, my dad ain't out on St. Paddy's Day having a green beer, chilling out. Like, I actually don't think that was killing it as much. I still think that there is just a, it just is what it is, man, right now. But that was tough. There's people not fucking with the whole golf situation. Right They're now. not. They're it's just, that's They're tired it of it. They're tired of it. You know, and now we and have this best, new like, Tiger golf league. It. The Tiger yeah, golf league looks, what do you think? Did you see the new, did you see the promo for the new Tiger golf league today? I did not. It actually looks all right. I think I might watch it. Um, well, it doesn't it? look horrible. What was it? Which is, uh, they, they had a vignette about how the rules are going to go, how it's going to be played, um, and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and it doesn't, and like, and like the, 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 the screen is like, you know, 30, 40 feet tall. And they're, they're hitting the screen from like 35 yards back. Um, so it's not your typical, you know, screen golf. You're like 30 yards back and you're hitting it into this 40 foot screen. And then, like, when they get to the green, the green complexes, they can actually adjust the the slopes and the undulations through, like, some type of technology that they have underneath the uh, underneath the green where it, like, adjusts, like, the slope and the speed and all this stuff. I mean, to me, it seems sort of cool, but I'm a fucking nerd. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to golf, I don't know how the the, 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 the masses will, will go about it, but I'm definitely going to watch. Um Right, but uh, before we move on to this week, before we go on to underdog, I do have one little story. Uh, I, I posted this on Twitter; and it was sort of hilarious, and people people thought it was funny. So I had a buddy come in, and he uh, he stayed he stayed. He's a, a estimator for our sister company. He lives in Tennessee. Not the biggest fan of flying, so he came, uh, did some work here this past week, left on Saturday, and, and he was flying Boeing. All the shit going on with the Boeing, so he was like nervous. Gave him an edible, right? I actually cut the edible into like strips, like when you when you dice an onion, you know how you like cut into like little strips, and then you cut the bottom, and then you start chopping. So I cut them into like little strips, so you could just pull a strip out and eat it, right? Because it's a two hundred milligram edible. And so he ends up, I guess he got nervous on the flight. And I talked to some people who work for the FAA. I guess they don't care about marijuana. If they see it, they'll report it. But more than likely, you're not going to get in trouble, is what I've been told from the FAA people. 
Um, and so as long as you're not, as long as it's like under a certain amount and edible, dry, edible THC legal to carry in airplanes, dry, edible THC, federally legal to carry in airplanes. Um, so he was fine. Anyways. So he gets nervous when he gets into the, the when he gets nervous. He's already eaten one. Like uh, it's, so it would hit by the time he get, got in there a little strip. And so he was nervous. He ate the whole thing. And so he ends up really, really fucked up. Goes through security, gets lost, comes back, go, takes a wrong turn, goes through security again, goes through security three times. Right. And so, and so, um, a guy, I guess, uh, a guy who works at Dallas airport saw him and the, you know, obviously he must've looked wrecked. Like if you're not used to eating edibles and you eat 200 milligrams of edibles, you're not going to look good. And so the guy literally like grabbed him and like escorted him to the gate, which I thought was hilarious. And like, you know, he always, so he hit me up. He was pissed. His wife was pissed. Like, uh, he, his, um, his wife is John Anderson's daughter, like a really, really famous country singer. Um, who was just inducted into the country music hall of fame like a couple weeks ago. And so they had to go to like a hall of fame party <laughs> for it. So he went, he was lit. His wife was so pissed at me. Um, I thought that was a hilarious story. And I, I just feel like I'm a bad influence sometimes because this isn't the first time that's happened. Damn, did I ever tell you about the leaner story? I don't remember, but it reminded yeah. me of uh, the time, what, the song you were telling the kids that time and the parents hated you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was like, yeah, stitches, you get stitches. I had a four-year-old yes. girl repeat that to her to her mother after I right. told her that because she was ratting out another kid. I was like, stitches, you get stitches, bitch. And then she went to her mom and said the same thing. But that's not this one. So we were at a um, Commanders game, Redskins game back in the day, like yeah, two, 2005, 2015. Um, and it was me, a few buddies. We were tailgating. We were lit. We were doing Jaeger bombs. Like, we were like 25 instead of 35. He's actually older than me. He was closer to 40. And so, so we're lit. We're walking into the stadium. He gets, uh, we get separated. I don't see him for the rest of the game. We go to our seats. We have great club seats. Um, but I don't see him for the whole game, right? And so after the game, we go to our car, and he's there, and he explains to me what happened. He said he was so drunk, he didn't know where he was. And so he would lean on, like, each little row, like, uh, section 133, 134, that gate, right? He would just lean, like, in the gate and watch the game until like security would be like, you can't watch the game from here. So he just go to the next little section, 133, <laughs> and lean at 133 until some security told me he had no idea where his tickets were. He was bombed out of his ass, had no fucking clue what was going on. So he literally went around the whole stadium the entire game and just leaned on like in the gap where you could watch the game and where you walk into your whatever your seating section <laughs> instead of and just, he just texting there. you guys and finding the no he, didn't, I, I, he said he said he didn't text he said he tried texting us he couldn't get his phone to, he was lit dude yeah. he was beyond lit i'm shocked that he found the car afterwards because i have been known to leave people at fedex field if they don't come to the car and that should happen let's just say i'm a bad influence on people and i get people fucked up a lot of the time. So that was a random story. I thought they were funny. Little prelude to the master's story time with Kenny, which is gonna be good in about a couple of weeks. I've been saving the story for a while. And so it should be good. All right. So let's move on. Uh first thing. Um five for what five. Was guy's name? Huh? Oh, that guy. I was gonna, I thought we were going to underdog. I'm we will. But, five but. for five. Impeccably I will say, coming up. Impeccably coming impeccably up. Impeccably coming up. Beat both Tambo and I. Uh in the three man. This past week, so he will be in our tournament of champions starting yeah. at the Sony. We're still trying to work something out with Underdog, maybe do something like Mayo's doing um, with the draft portion. Uh, and if you haven't signed up for that, it's no rake over on uh, Mayo. Just go to the PME um, uh, site for iTunes, Spotify, whatever. Look in the descriptions, and you can click the link to get in that Underdog uh, fantasy draft. But let's go ahead and talk about our Underdog this past week. So I had a two man. Um, I forget who it was, but and Tambo had a three man. Uh, awesome. You went three bagger when you said you wouldn't. No, no, I only went two last week. You went three. No, the people yeah. show the tag hundred percent. I know for no. a fact you've taken too many edibles. No, I've definitely taken too many edibles in my yeah. life. There's no, there's no doubt. The funniest about part that. of last week is you said you normally wouldn't do a three bagger, but it paid better, and you also said. Round one sucks, and then the only round you won at was round one. Oh, no, no, it was a two-bagger for me. It was Taylor Moore and Minwoo Lee. So what that did I have? You had the three. 
You had the thrift. Man. Now maybe I'm taking too many edibles. You might be taking too many edibles. I'll bring some to Montreal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. McNeely, Hostler, and Gim. Yeah. So I, it was, you, now I know what it was. You said why you won't do three baggers. I said I'm only going to do two, but you convinced me. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to throw a third one on right on the show. And I threw Doug Gim on. I think that's what it was. So there you so, go. So yeah, all, either so way. All five hit. Of, our, of our picks hit. And there were people out there who placed a, a, a wager on all five and one. So a great way to start. I think it was the first time me and Tambo have done one and an underdog pick them together. So really, really good way to start. A uh, nice little five banger to go out and do it. And of course, I'm breaking my rules once again um, because I am playing a three bagger for my first, uh, for my underdog pick and play of the week. Again, we'll be doing this every week. Use promo code MAIL. Save yourself, uh, get a get a deposit match up to $100. So what I'm doing this week, I'm going to go Bo Hostler higher than three bogeys. Um, never made the cut here. Um, the median score at this course is plus one. Okay. Uh, and he's missed his last two cuts on courses that are hard, difficult with Bermuda. With a Bermuda grass overseeded with Poetry Vials. Now this week, a little bit different. It's like the mini Verde Bermuda, not the Tiff Eagle Bermuda or whatever, uh, but still around, um, Overseeded by Poa, Trivialis. So I'm going to go ahead and go higher than three bogeys with Bo Osler. And then, of course, this is all for round one. I'm going higher than three bogeys or worse with Keith Mitchell. After what happened on Sunday, he can't be right mentally, right? I mean, he had a tournament. He thought he had a tournament in the back. Right, Cashmere Keith. Everyone thought it was going to be pretty easy for him, especially with the couple, you know, couple stroke lead guy who's won on tour in the past and it literally just totally shits the bet. Um, it's got to be weighing on his mind, so I'm going to go ahead and play that narrative when it comes down to it. And then I'm going um, Scotty Sheffield over four and a half birdies. I mean, pretty self-explanatory. Scotty's the best player in the world. Uh, he's, you know, finished a couple of top tens at this event. Two straight wins. Uh, I could definitely see him getting five birdies on this course. No problem. There's going to be, what, three par fives I'm sure he'll birdie all three of those, and he'll hit some iron shots that are unbelievable for tap-in birdies on two others. I have no no doubt in my mind that's going to happen. So this pays off, uh, I think, uh, almost 0.5. I think it's a it's a 7 to 5 time. So it pays 5 times uh, your, your number. So I'm putting 250 on it to try and win 12.50. Tambo. Yeah. We're going to be up against each other this week because I don't think you can put them both on there. But the cool part about underdog, again, different than DFS or however you want to look at it, is like my bet can still win. Your bet can still win. And then, again, you guys will have to pick if you're trying to mix them up. But I have Hostler over three and a half birdies. Uh, I, I still like that. And then I like Jaeger over three and a half birdies as well. I, I just think the numbers are low. You saw it's like four and a half on Wyndham Clark and four and a half on Scotty. And I get all that for what who they are. But I'm fine with just taking the shot. I think, again, like, Hostler could have four bogeys and win for you, and he could have four birdies and be even on the day. He could add a double on there and be two over on the day and both still hit. So it's like I just look at it from that perspective, and I'm trying to compare them against the other guys in the range. I also don't care this week about very much. You'll find out after your course preview besides game theory to, like, the setup. But, like, again, they oh they've done so well here. They missed the cut here. How many times they play it? Twice. Like I just, that's never going to weigh a guy like Hostler, prime example, two missed cuts here. The two of the last three years, the only times he's played it, um, that it's been here and that he's played it. And then two missed cuts recently. But before that he was fine. Like if it's really not going to be there after two weeks, I just don't care. And again, it doesn't have to be there. He can shoot six over and have four birdies on the card. The it's only, the only, the argument I'm going to go is because Hostler. You know, he just played two tough courses, Sawgrass and um, Faust Bar, Innisbrook, Copperhead, whatever. Two hard courses. Um, and that's really struggle. Easy. This course is not easier than those. Yeah. I yeah. don't know yet. The way the PGA sets things up these days, it could be very easy. And also the the the, 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 the uh, season change could help. I mean, I think it, it's possible it could be softer. We'll see. I think it will be a little bit, actually, just from what I've seen early on. But yeah, the good news is, like I said, that's the best part. You guys pick which hostler one you went on there to make it a four. 
But uh, even if you go with Kenny's, I think it's going to still pay like nine to one or ten to one. Yep. So what were your three again? It was just two, it was... just Hostler and yeah. Oh, you're doing it too. Yeah, it pays okay. three to one, and it's uh, Hostler and Yeager both over three and a half birdies. So one thing I will say is the 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 three baggers and the five baggers I've been told are better rake for us. So that's what I've been told. I'm not the math guy. It's from Nelson Adcock. Also, He's a math Hostler guy. was a scorcher, by the way. Hostler over oh. three and a half is a, is a scorcher. So that's why. Ah, I got to love those scorchers. They had some of those in the first round last week. Um, I had Sam Burns and Cam Young top 10. Uh, that's it was close. Paid like 20, it paid like 25 to one. And Burns until his double bogey in 14, we were golden. Yeah. So, 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 so be on the lookout for those scorchers. They're always fun. All right, so before we get on to this week, let's pay some bills. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest-growing fantasy app in the industry. I personally like the Pick'em games. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a Pick'em entry. can also make rivals picks, which pits two players against each other. Now, the reason I like the Pick'em games is because of these things called Scorchers. There's these little chili peppers next to the golfer's names, and if you click on that, it adds to your multiplier, so you can win even more money. Sign up today with promo code MAYO and get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as an instant Pick'em special. Must be 18 or over and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-522-4700. Or visit www.ncpgambling.org. All right. So for this week, the PGA Tour heads to Houston, Texas for the Texas Children's Houston Open from Memorial Park Golf Course. This is a municipal golf course. You and me and whoever, we can go out there and play this course for under 100 bucks. All right. Uh, This course has only been in play for three years and it was played in the fall during those three years. This makes it tougher to figure out what to look for in golfers. But there is some information we can look at to make it easier. Uh, the course is originally designed by John Bredemus, who did some work in the design of Colonial Country Club. Recently, the course was redesigned by Tom Doak. And although none of his courses have had a PGA Tour run, he did intern for Pete Dye. There has been some speculation that Sawgrass and other Dye courses could be seen as correlated courses since Doak has spoken about how much influence Dye has had on his career. Another little aspect of this course, Brooks Kepka, he helped. In the redesign, you can sort of tell that this is a Brooksy type course, you know, major esque, long, difficult. Um, so you know, you see, you know, that's another little narrative you could play uh, about this type of course and how difficult it's going to play. Uh, but we shall see. We've never seen it in March before, so uh, that's something to really keep an eye on because every time it played in the fall, it was fast. It was firm. They've had a bunch of rain uh, here. I'm going over it. I'm going to probably repeat myself. But uh, they've had a bunch of rain here. Uh, It's raining right now. Thunderstorms. So maybe it plays softer. I don't know how um, the drying system there, uh, the sub air works. I don't know. So it's something you're really going to have to keep an eye on as you watch Golf Central, stuff like that, hear interviews from the course, uh, just to see – and the the guys who've played this in the fall play now if they see any major differences. Um, other courses that have been spoken about that are sim that might be comparable: Riviera, Augusta, TPC Scottsdale. Um, you know, I look at other Texas courses as well: Colonial, Valero, and the Golf Club of Houston, where they played this event uh, for you know the 15 years previous. Um, there also has been a little bit of chatter. Uh, if you listen to Pat Mayo's show this morning, his research show um, about. You know, leaderboards have been similar here and at Puerto Rico. I don't know if it's a real thing, uh, but, you know, it's something that you might want to dig into. Um, Now, in 2020, uh, the course played tough with the mini score only being minus 13 and the median score being minus one. Ortiz took it down. In 2021, Kokrak won a minus 10 with a median score of plus one. A lot of the top golfers in the field were near the top of the leaderboard, including Decky, DJ, and Kepka uh, the first year, and Scheffler, Burns, and Cam Smith, and Sungjae the second year. Um, in 2022, which is the last time they played this event, 
Finau ran away with it at minus 17, but there weren't that many people double digit under par. In the three years this course has hosted this tournament, only seven golfers out of what 420 plus, right? Only seven golfers have shot double digit under par for the four rounds at this event. Now it's only three years. And it was in the fall, not the spring. So it doesn't give us the whole story. But the greens were firm and severely sloped. Hitting fairways and short game was important. Length off the TC is important. And there were a lot of long iron shots. Texas, of course, also known for wind. And if that picks up, expect another difficult test. As of now, we're looking at 20 plus mile per hour gusts all four days. And now what we saw last week, it doesn't even need to be really windy for some of these type of courses that are already difficult to play difficult, like we saw. I mean, it wasn't like that one day it was supposed to be a shit ton of fucking win and never really materialized. Winning score was still, what, minus 12? There was only two guys that finished uh, double digit under par. This is a course that it didn't really have the weather that it normally has. Last week at the Valspar at Copperhead. So this is another type of course where even if the situations are a little bit benign, it's still going to be tough. The only thing difference is we'll see how soft everything is. Because that's going to make a big difference. If you can hit your long irons onto these greens and they stop, it's going to make the course a lot easier. So that's something to pay attention to as the week goes on. A Memorial Park Golf Course, 7,450 yard, par 70, three par fives, five par threes. Uh, two of the par fives should be reachable by all. Um, in two, the par five eighth um, is a... Um, Man, if like 630 plus yards, it should play as a three shot hole. Three of the par threes range from 200 to 235 yards, and the last two are much shorter, ranging from 155 to 167. Even those two short um, par threes played over par the last three years. Uh, now, when it comes to the par fours, two play fairly short with the artists right at or just below 400 yards, with one being drivable. It's on the back nine. Three par fours range from 440 to 455 yards. And five are look, uh, and then four are from uh, are very long. They play like four hundred ninety to plus four hundred ninety, like five hundred thirty. There's like three that are over five hundred yards. Um, now looking at this configuration, I think we see a fair amount of shots uh, from over two hundred yards or from one hundred seventy five to two hundred yards every round. Off the tee, golfers are going to see tree line fairways that have been widened a bit by Tom Doak. The trees aren't too bunched like they are at Colonial, and golfers will have outs most of the time when they miss wildly into the trees. Also, there is a bit of room between the edge of the fairway and the start of the tree line. Though if golfers miss the fairway, the rough, you know, it could be penal. Uh, the rough has normally been about two and a half inches in the past, but the area has seen a bunch of rain this year, and it's the spring. It's not the fall, so everything should be growing. It should be lush. Um, so this could lead to the Bermuda grass rough being thicker and taller than normal. We shall see. Uh, the one thing you won't see much of is bunkers. Only 19 on the course with only two water hazards that are in play on four holes. Uh, hitting it in the rough will make it tough to get the correct distance golfers need for their approaches. I don't think missing a lot of fairies is going to make it impossible to play well, but I do think uh, if a golfer does miss a lot of fairies, they're going to need a good short game. Uh, it brings short game more into play. Now on approaches, golfers are going to see above average size Bermuda grass greens. I think they're the mini dwarf whatever. Bermuda grass, overseat with poetry vials. The greens may be slightly large when it comes to square footage, but many are crowned on the edges. And depending on pin locations, the landing areas have a good birdie to have a good birdie chance are pretty small. If golfers miss the greens, they're going to have to deal with many shortly mown off areas similar to what we see at Augusta. Uh, the greens should be firm and fast and are severely sloped. Tambo, what are you looking for in golfers this week? Yeah, I was saying it earlier, but I mean, obviously you broke it down well. We've got some history here, like you said, just three you know, last few years, but some of the redesign, all that stuff. But for me, uh, it's going to be when we get to these tiers, and it's going to be the discussion we're going to segue into right away. But it's 40% Scotty week, I think, is what we're going to see out there, right? Scotty Scheffler, 3-1. to one. We have not seen it. It's 2.5-1 to one in some places. Like We just haven't seen anything like this in the longest time. He switches to the mallet putter, comes out, gets two wins back-to-back, -back, takes a week off. Now he's back into the mix and the swing of things again. They finally priced it different. $2,100 in the difference between Scotty and Wyndham Clark. Even then, you could argue that either he could have been more or they could have left Clark, Thigala, Zal, like put those guys even further down, just separate them even further. It's just that much 
of a difference. I did the first look show earlier today on the Ship It Nation YouTube station. And just looking at it, you can build Scotty lineups. You have 7400 bucks left and change, I guess, for five golfers. So you can still stay way above these 6K guys. So it's going to come down to that. It's a lot of how you're building your lineups out this week, ways to get different, not just playing the same guys everybody else is with it. But I think uh, that's going to be the biggest decision for everybody, and I think that's going to be sort of what shapes the slate, Kenny. Let's go to this top range. I mean, what are you doing with Scotty? Yeah, no idea on a Monday, but I mean, right now it's going to see like 40% just is a lot. So uh, I think a lot of people are going to just do, you know, what we did. It's almost the inverse of the Minwoo Lee $6,600, where people all of a sudden decide I need to go all in, I need a fade, or then other people just say, I'll just play the field and build my lineups differently with Minwoo Lee. I think that's sort of how I would lean early on a Monday is I get why people are going to be all in. The one thing I will say, uh, if I had to right now, like I guess like if I had to make a choice, I would pr- if I if it was between all in and fade, I'd be more likely to be all in, I think. And one of the things I noticed is this, and here's why, and just give it off the top, is when Lee Aldrich and myself went through on the first look today, first of all, it's, you know, an, it's a myth. When people say, well, at 13K, he has to win. It's not even true. Like, it's what do the other guys around him do? We've seen it years where it's been that way, and it's like one or two guys make the cut. Scotty can finish seventh, and your other five could be one through six, right? I mean, not e- not even that. They could all suck. Look at last week. Like, like I honestly think even if Xander didn't push for T five, I still think that like Sam Burns ended up in the winning lineup with. A, I know it's because Malnati. I get the breakdown of it, but my point: Xander probably could have went T ten and still ended up in the winning lineup because just you you use your salary. People do. So with that said, Clark, the Gala, Zal. Be now like some of these guys it's like are they what are they going to do the way versus how scott has been playing well that's a challenge second of all you go down the board not, they opened up the 7k range it's more like theory talk but it goes into the section anyway they went to 17 guys in the 7k range this week but i'll tell you there is like 25 guys in the 6300 range up to 69 that are fine. Like, to me, they're like 7K guy. Like, they could have easily been the 7K. Normally would be 7K, yes. I what think, mean? isn't 6K the new 7K? The way they, this new pricing is? Almost, yeah. Good good yeah. way of looking at it. But yeah. with that said, if you don't believe in the, you know, the Clarks, the Gallows, the Zals, the Finals, which I understand why you wouldn't, there is actually a lot of combinations and ways to go with Scotty lineups, being that you have that many guys down low. On top of the fact, Kenny, you can also leave a thousand bucks on the table. Because 75 and 65, if, it is, if the sixes are the new sevens, I like how you put that. If the 6,500 could be the 7,500, you can just leave 1,000 on the table. So while I may not be all in, I don't usually lock anybody. Um, the more you look at it from that and see it from that you know sort of bird's eye view, while he's going to be 40, if you have 60, 65, I mean, two-thirds of your lineups, you still have outs to the one-third that don't. If you're talking, I'm talking about like a 150 pool, like a 150 max. You can still get away with it and be fine, I think. But for me... That's just early thoughts on it. I think Zal is probably the other guy I like up top there. I don't know about, you know, Thigala and Clark and Chase and that stuff. But, the, you know, w- what's your take on Thigala? He's the one I'd probably be more interested in than Wyndham Clark. And everyone will say, oh, everyone shits on Wyndham Clark. He always shows up. We, w- it's a different story every time. He's become like the Gary Woodland of the upper end. It's funny. They both have one U.S. Open. But it's like, he oh, he can do this. He can do that. Last time we talked about Wyndham, it's, he's got to be in a strong field to show up. Now it's like it's definitely not a strong field. It's a harder course, but oh, but he plays well at hard courses. So it's like, I don't know. What's your take between Wyndham, Thigala, and Zalatoris? And then give your Scotty take too. I'm just curious on those bottom three first. I think I'm going Wyndham uh, out of those three. Just because he's a proven winner. Uh, I mean, you know, the guy, the way he's playing right now, back-to-back runner-ups behind Scotty, right? Uh, he's the second best player in the world. Uh, and, and I think I think this course suits him, and I think I think it suits Scheffler even more. I think it shoots really shoots Cam Young. I don't know why Cam is not playing this course, but um, what I think is since this course is so difficult, if this was the birdie fest, I would probably fade Scheffler, probably, uh, because you know when, when it's a birdie fest, people are shooting twenty five, twenty six under. Um, it bunches everybody up because these guys are all good, right? If it's a birdie fest and there's not that much trouble, these guys can hit fairways and greens and shoot and have 30 birdies. Like every single person in this field can do that, right? Um, they're they're the best in the world. Uh, if they're playing an easy course, 
more than likely every single person in this field can go out and shoot third, 20, 20 plus under in four days if their game is on. If their game is on, it, it's, it's that simple. Um, and so I think because this is a more difficult course, um, similar, a major-esque type course, only seven golfers have shot double-digit under par at this course in the three years that it has been played. Now, again, we're making assumptions based upon fall versus spring. So that's something we really have to pay attention to as the week goes on. If golfers are saying this course is a lot easier in the spring, shit, your your mindset should probably change. Uh, but as of now, I'm going at it as this is a fucking hard-ass course. One of the top five to ten most difficult courses on tour. Um, and in that type of situation, what you normally hear is the cream rises to the top, right? Um, you know, and, and so... I'm playing. I'm gonna play Scheffler and I'm gonna play Wyndham. Um, and, and if 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 it continues to go through the whole week, where um, you know, it's a difficult course and people are still saying, you know, it's going to be tough to get the double digit under par. That's just going to validate those two being my my two guys. I'll go fifty percent, uh, Scheffler, thirty five percent Wyndham, maybe thirty percent Wyndham. I still think it validates uh, Willie Z too. By the way, don't forget Willie Z could have some majors in his pocket, and then on top yeah. of it, before the missed cut. Fourth, second, thirteenth. Uh, he's there. He's there. Okay. Here's the thing. You know, Willie Z is close to Wyndham. I will say. The my thoughts could change, and I can go Scheffler, Willie Z. But I'm only going to be playing two people up here uh, because I'm going to have twenty nine hundred less, almost three grand at that point. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. You could probably play all three if it comes down to it. I'll see how it goes when I make my lineup because Willie Z would be my next play uh, in here. Uh, so I'll have to double check. I'm gonna play Scheffler. Um, you know, I, I I'm contemplating putting him as the only bet on my betting call at three to one. That's how much I think that he will win. Now the the, war, the 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 things against him are going to be his neck, right, dude? If his neck was really bothering him two weeks before the Masters, he would have withdrawn, right? Uh, now the thing is, he does want. He has said in the past how much these Texas events mean to him, um, and and, and you know that's why you see him playing this event in the fall, you know, a, a couple of times. Um, so, but I don't think he's stupid enough to have that thought in his head and risk more injury heading into the masters in two weeks. Scotty doesn't seem like a dumb person to me. Um, I would say he was a little quick in the neck and it's fine by now. If he doesn't withdraw, I'm not even worried. About it. Basically is the way I'm going about it this week because I mean and people had doubts the last time said he couldn't win back to back players he couldn't do this he did it like the numbers that he's producing are numbers that we haven't seen since the early 2000s right it's been over 20 years um, since we've seen a golfer produce these type of numbers this consistent and now not, he has not, the putter. Not playing in the Texas Open next week by the way either the Valero Texas Open not, not um, in it as of now Maybe he yeah. I'm saying like I just look. So he, he's playing one of these events, right? And so he decided to do this one so he can have a, a, a two week break before the master starts. Um, so I'm 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 not worried about the injury. I'm going to play Scheffler, probably fifty percent, and then we'll see what goes with Wyndham Clark and and Zal Torres. But I want to play one of those two as well, maybe even both. We'll see. Let me check the ownership projections. You know, if Wyndham's only going to be, is Wyndham's going to be squeezed out? By you know Zalatoris and Scotty, and it's only going to be eighteen percent, sixteen percent. You know, then you could probably play three. You know, and still be uh, have leverage on the field uh, over all three of the golfers. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. With ownership nine K range. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. My first cash game cornerstone, Scotty Scheffler. Sorry, first cash game cornerstone, Scotty Scheffler. They're not really going out there uh, on that one. Nine K range. I like Jason Day. Um. You know, earlier this year, I had a couple of top tens. He was popping out there. Um, has that nice uh, long iron play with the hall, with the you know the high ball flight that he got. Um, he played this course a couple of top 15s, a couple of top 20s um, in the past. So I think Jason Day is my favorite GPP play um, in the 9K range. And Alex Norwood's going to be my second cascade cornerstone. A um, couple of really, really good finishes here uh, the, the last few years. A couple of really solid finishes. His last two outings, I'm going to ride uh, course form and recent form 
uh, with him. I know it's you know small sample, but I'm still going to ride that. Uh, so he's going to be my second cash game cornerstone. Tampa, uh, who do you like in the nine carries? Like the guys you said, I think Si Wu is still a uh, valid play in there. I think again, it's you know it's often oftentimes we see him like chasing and whatnot, but he's been pretty solid overall this season. He got yeah, 35th year last good. year. I think he's fine. Uh, Fino though, man, what what about Fino? He got to feed the family. He he got to get that uh, that dough three three grand a week for food, Kenny. I saw you talking about that. We forgot to mention it right quick. Half a million a year, so to people get to so take mad. his family around. I don't understand why people are so mad about that. Okay, can I just break down the food thing for one second and then we can move on? I know people probably don't give a shit, but I care. Like, this is the thing. Three grand, there's seven of them. She said the two of them and their five kids. They probably have a nanny that helps out. Maybe they don't. But they have a chef who has to prepare it. That's got to get built into the cost. I highly doubt they're just buying the food every single night. And then divide that up over, and then there's three to four meals. There's the snacks. There's the drinks. There's all that. They're putting everything into it. I don't actually think it's that bad for what they said for a week. For the lodging days. is what people were crazy with, like twenty grand for lodging, but you're there for five, six days, right? At least they probably yeah. got off earlier. The caddy has to be involved too. Like you got all these other factors, and then also, I mean, you and I have been to places where the Airbnb for four, four days, three nights is like eight k or something for the whole weekend yeah. for everybody. It's like he can easily find a place for twenty k, and he can easily afford it. So why is it? That, I don't know. It just doesn't seem. That it seems weird me. that people were like so angry about that. I'm like, yeah. why are you angry yeah, about that? I mean, and, you know, it's like all this stuff. I'm like, what? yeah, it's sort of what the society's coming to nowadays. Like when you think about it, like when we were growing up, Tambo, in our youth and we were kids, when we saw somebody who came from nothing, made it, uh, has become successful, earned a lot of money, you sort of like look up to that guy, right? Like that's what the American dream is. That's what, you know, we want to follow um, as as someone who is, you know, not born in, in America. Like, that's why we come to the United States, right? I mean, like, to see somebody who, you know, was living in this, you know, he did not have a very, um, he wasn't like your country club kid, right? He had to go out and hustle to play golf because he couldn't afford green fees when he was growing up. And he goes through and, and, and becomes a successful, extremely successful, one of the top golfers in the world, one of the top people in his profession in the world. And he makes a shit ton of money because of that. And people shit on him now because of that? Because like, he makes money? Yeah. Like, he, like he cut corners society and nowadays is just, too. like, if, you, if you're rich, you get, you get so, so shit on. Like, I can understand, like, like your family trusts, right? Those guys, the kids who, who who just, you know, taking their mommy and daddy's money. I could see that why people would be, you know, uh, like not so nice to those type of people. But like Tony is a guy who worked his fucking ass off his whole entire career to get where he's at right now to be able to spend that money week in and week out. And for the hate, it's so weird. I don't know if it's the younger generation um, because they feel like, Life is more difficult than it was 30, 40, 50 years ago, which is true. Um, but I, I don't know. It's just it's it's really strange to me. Like the way these people think and like how think angry even if they he are. Fifteen K though, people would still be talking. It's like could he cut corners? Yes. Could he spend fifteen instead of twenty five? Yes. If he spent fifteen, would the reaction have been almost the same? Probably. People are always looking for something. We did this last pod. People are always looking for something to talk about. It's like yes. talk about anything else. And and people do like the come up more than they like people when they get to the top, right? When someone's doing well, it's always that way with, like, you see it with, like, rap artists or, like, country singers or whatever it might be. They, they're they still fans. They have tons of fans. But then they pick up a lot of haters because then people are like, oh, they made it. Like, no. Oh. Well, now they like, sold out, right? They're, they're, using, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're so, spending so. the money they earned, so they sold out, right? I mean, I don't know. They, 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 yeah, and that's it's funny. It's really, really confusing Liv, to me. With Liv, he didn't take the Liv money. He didn't yeah. get Liv, Everyone thought he's going with Rom. He's a hero, so he spends the money that he didn't sell out for. It's the money he earned, and now he's a sellout because he's you know he's like uh, he's spending too much or he's wasting well, money. No, it's just weird. Like my my job right now, it's a new job. I've been in it for four years, but I want to become really good at it. I want to be the best that I could be, and really the main reason for that is so I can make as much fucking money as possible, right? I I, I don't understand why that's a bad thing. Like I I don't get it. Like it's so yeah, weird, man. 
society. Anyways, let's move on. Let's go. Uh, uh, let's go to any. Are you? Did you go to the IK range? I need to talk about uh, yeah, I'll do anybody the AK else range first. If you want, I'll, I'll go okay. to the AK range first. I, I mentioned earlier, I, I took these two guys on underdog Jaeger and Hostler. Again, we'll see how it all plays out, but I mean, they always will pop. It's kind of like an interesting spot, though, Kenny, because you mentioned it. If it is going to be a little bit softer and maybe better for them, different time of year means a little bit more scoring, whatever that might be. I like Jaeger. I like Hostler. I like those guys in there. Both ways, I probably like Orschel. Uh, I think you said he's going to be one of your favorite plays. I think he's fine either way. But the guys like uh, like an Aaron Rye, I would like a lot more if it plays hard, like what we've seen, you know, versus if it gets easier. I don't know if I want him putting up that score. So it's like, I, I like Jaeger, Hostler, Orschel, sort of the three guys in there that are standing out early. But then also it's like, I could see where you could flip this 8K range based on how you hear the course is playing and that sort of thing. Cause this is sort of one of those ranges. The other thing I'll say, Kenny quick, and then I'll click it to you is just that this is what I was trying to say earlier on the first look show. Like this is where you go, Scotty, you don't get as many, you could get a couple of these guys in and still drop down. If you look, if you use the six Ks, which I think people are going to be fine to do. So I really could see that. And then I could also see people going like someone below Scotty with a nine K and an eight K or a two eight K. So I think this range does get, uh, where it usually gets overlooked, I think when people are going up, they're either going to like Zalatoris or above, or I think when they're going down, they're coming into this Jaeger, Hostler, Rye, Horschel, Gim, like get into that range where these guys they feel better about than the Finaus, the Siwoos, the Mitchells after that Sunday, those types of guys. I don't know your take, but at least what I could see happening based on how it's setting up this week early. Yeah, I mean, my favorite play, I like Jaeger uh, here, uh, but my favorite play is going to be Billy Ho. Um, you know, he ranks very highly in the model. He's been playing pretty good golf. He's a quintessential GPP play, right? I mean, he's had like a fourth, eighth, twelfth, nineteenth, and four missed cuts, like in like his last ten starts. I mean, so uh, it's possible that like a win's coming for him. I think I, I think I, I looked at him at thirty-five to one without Scheffler. Uh, my betting card is either going to be with Scheffler or without. I have two cards right now. I don't know which one I'm going to use. Uh, I'll go over them at the end. But um, I, I like the way he's playing. It seems like he's playing pretty well. Last week, gain strokes in all the major strokes gain categories. Um, I'm a fan of Billy O this week. He's probably, he will be my favorite play in the 8K range. And I like Thunder Bear. Let me pee in the middle of the airplane and grab a flight attendant's boobies. That's uh, Thunder Bear Olsen right there. Uh, so, so you know, I, I'm sure people will know that story, right? I mean, everyone knows. That's why he was suspended from the DP World Tour. All that good shit. I mean, the thing is, I've been wasted on a plane and my ass wouldn't even do that, which is pretty fucking crazy. Uh, he must have been fucking lit. Uh, anyways, uh, the thing about Thorbjorn, Thunder Bear, uh, long irons are a strength. Um, 175 to 200, 200 plus, very, very strong. I do not expect him to gather ownership. Do you, Tambo? I'm thinking no. single digit No, No, Mackenzie, uh, Mackenzie Hughes has great history here, coming off a third, about a couple other top 30s. Like, I, I think people definitely go to Hughes instead. Yeah, I'm thinking so too. So I'm thinking single digit own great GPP play pivot, um, in my opinion, uh, with Thunder Bear. I mean, if I remember correctly, he was, I don't remember, but he had like a top finish recently, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I think he finished top 10. No, I think Somewhere. he won overseas. Like, he definitely wasn't doing much lately. No, he won overseas, but I remember seeing him near top of the leaderboard here recently. But not and then he fell it. off. I'm pretty sure he fell off. Yeah, he fell off. You're right. Uh, he did win across the, across the, the pond here recently, and actually hasn't been that great around. But, you know, again, it's GPD play. Uh, you, you're hoping that his best golf is played. That's what you hope when you, when you get a GPD play. And his strength, of course, is going to be the long irons. Um, now, when we get to the 7K range, my third cascade cornerstone, it's going to be Taylor Moore. Um, the guy, I think I think he's leading the PGA Tour and cuts made um, in a row. He, he's in the top five. It, it's it's in the teens uh, how many cuts he's made in a row. And, of course, you're looking for cut makers. Um, I expect similar type numbers to what we saw last week where 6 of 6 was like 3%. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, I like him at that price. Uh, for uh, for cash, uh, Taylor Moore at seventy eight hundred dollars. I mean, he's still ranked top twenty five in my model. Top twenty, um, at twenty five in T to green play, bogey avoidance. Uh, top twenty five, top twenty five in stroke skin approach. All in the last twenty four rounds. Uh, pretty good, a really good, a well above average with his longer irons inside the top thirty five in both one seventy five to two hundred, two hundred plus. So yeah, I'm a fan of Taylor Moore. 
He's going to be cash game cornerstone number three. Other guys I do like in this range, um, Thomas Detry at $7,400. Um, really pretty good showing last week. Again, another guy who has really, really high ball flight. Uh, you know, really, really good from 200 plus. Um, he's a GBP play that I would like to get on. Um, and uh, Luke List over here uh, at 7,500. You know he's long enough off the tee. His iron game is still solid. Really good with his long irons. He's another guy that I'd take a peek at, Tampa. Yeah, I like Ben Griffin up at the top. He was uh, a guy I was, you know, been playing a little bit of, and last week was the 17th. He's got a 16th here last year. Uh, Taylor Moore, who you mentioned. By the way, you, you talk about all his made cuts. Guess where he misses cuts? Here. 0 for 2, back-to-back years. So I we'll have to see. That's where the, the rubber will hit the road, right? We'll find out which it is. We always do this course history, course history or course fit, court fit, court fittery. We might be having to coin that. But uh, whether they're a course fit or a, a co- have course history, but also his recent form, uh, and, and that's the setup here that we're looking at with Taylor Moore. So I'll we'll have to see how he does. Uh, Akshay is a guy I really like. I think 17th the last time out. He was one that stood out. You mentioned Luke List. Dietrich and Lee, KH Lee, both had good Sundays. So that stood out. And then a little bit of talk this morning around uh, Joel Damon, right? Joel Damon, since the uh, the full swing 2.0 came out, he's turned it on a little bit. Any love for Joel Damon down there at the bottom? Or yeah, else? I have him starred. I think he's played well at this event a couple of times also. Um, so it looks like his yeah, game is Yeah, that's sort- what it is. Fifth and ninth. You just, that's like yeah. Was yeah, fifth and ninth here the last two times. It looks like his game is trending upwards. Uh, basically, you want a good amount of money at the players. That has to be a little bit of a relief after what we saw for um, an awful swing for last season where he was struggling so badly. Um, I mean, fucking Gino was broke, like not taking any money. I felt bad for him. He's like, dude, you get, yeah, maybe he's seeing the uh, the sports psychologist, like, like uh, Gino he wanted. He was, yeah, he said he was. Yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, it's pretty incredible stuff how much that shit could help. So um, 606,000 was Joel Damon, just note, at that event. He won 600K, right? 600K. Yeah. So and then so now you sort of, I mean, you win 600K, you sort of balling freely, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I if you haven't won in a while, haven't made that much money in a while, and you get half a million dollars into your account, you know, yeah, you're, you might you're, be you're, you're going to have a little bit though. of a weight. You're going to have a little bit of a weight off your shoulder, right? I mean that's that's normal for everybody. Um so I yeah, I like it. I like him. It still um, feels good to pay off the balance, does it? Yeah, I guess. No, I think uh, he got, with the way it was playing before that, he I was saying he might have some credit cards to pay off. Yes, but, uh, he might have some credit card debt, yes. Still probably feels yes. good to just get those out of there, dude. But he made the cut last week too, won a little bit at least, right? He's uh, coining up, man. He got forty nine, yeah, I mean, eleven, forty nine. He, he could do it a week and a few weeks in a row, make that cheddar, be back in it. Be all right. Gino will be happy. They won't be staying at these crazy motels that look like people got murdered in. Remember those that Gino used to post? Oh, amazing. Like, two, no. three, four years ago before like Damon really started like playing really well uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> if, you, if you follow Gino on Twitter, go back and look at some of these fucking places. It was like a bit. Today. It was so funny though because it was legit, but it also was like, yeah, it was like blood bit, like on like, the walls. Like, look at the wall where my guy has me staying at and it was like the yeah. walls are beat up. There's blood stains. Like It was definitely <laughs> rough. Put him in the rough part of town. Yeah, damn. All right. So um, let's move on to the 6K range. I like Novak up top. Uh, really strong approach game. He had a green top 10 in this field. Really good from 200 plus. Really good around the green. If the wind picks up, you're going to need that. Uh, so I like um, Novak a lot. Taylor yeah, Pendrith just rates highly in my model. Uh, again, so he has the length. Uh, lots of birdies. Again, really strong with his longer irons. Pretty good around the green. Was a disappointment last week. So I, you know, expect not many people to be on him. Under five percent, maybe. Um, in that in that range. Uh, Joseph Bramlett played well last week. A guy who's been playing, you know, decent here recently. And I can get behind Bramlett. Um, Sam Stevens. Anytime it's a driver heavy course, I really like Sam Stevens. Um, so I will play uh Sam. Uh. At this event, again, uh, you know, top 25 in driving distance, really good off the tee, um, good from 200 plus. Uh, so I like Sam Stevens. Um, Maddie Schmidt has been quietly having like a really good three months, like three straight top 25s for a guy that's going to be what, $6,300? Um, and, you know, re- strong off the tee, top 20 in strokes gain off the tee, really good from 175 to 200. 
Really good on par threes. Again, five par threes uh, at this event. It's something you got to take into account. Um, Goderup at 6,100. Again, another hall, uh, tall, high ball flight. If you listen to Pat's show uh, on Sunday, um, he really liked me. You know, he talks about him. He, he's probably going to put a bet on him. I sort of, I'm going to tail. I I'm going to bet on him as well. You know, he's got talent. Uh, and he has that nice ball fight where the, all with those long irons, which just go sky high, just drop in the air and can sit. Uh, now, again, if it's super wet conditions, everybody's ball is going to do that. But So we'll have to see. Uh, um, JJ Spawn down here. Oh, no, no. We're going to the 5K. Right? Tampa, who do you like in 6K? Right? I was just going to say, I won't, because you, you named a bunch, and I'm with you on some, you know, I didn't say them all, but I just think in general, that's what I was trying to say. This range, like Novak. Smalley as a fifth. Smalley's the opposite of Taylor Moore. He's got a uh, a fourth and a fifteenth here the last two years and coming in off five missed cuts. So it's like an opposite effect if you want to look off course history. But um, Malnati coming off the win. Wallace, Stallings, Bramlett, Ryan Moore, Sam Stevens. There's a bunch of guys. And they even got like Carson Young, Justin Suh, and Ryan Palmer at the bottom of the 6K range where, you know, Dylan Wu. There's a lot of guys in this range, Kenny, that you can make a case for. So... It does make me think long and hard about the Scheffler situation up top. If now you get where I'm coming from, is that this range is loaded. Even if we already yeah. liked guys in the seven Ks, the eight Ks may end up getting very popular because all those names where people will land on, even in Scheffler lineups. And if you're like, man, if I take some of these guys into account, you can get Scheffler with guys nine K and above, or you can get Scheffler with whatever your 8K guys you like, and then a bunch of these guys and, and the 7K loaded range. So I, I think that's all I'll say about all this, like without going into favorites here. Like those are some of the guys I'm mentioning I like, but I'm just saying there's a lot of guys in this range that you can fit in with those other builds. So from that perspective, I, I think that makes it um, really tough to get away from Scheffler this week. That That's the one thing I'll say. What about a 5K range? Did anybody stick out to you? Yeah, I was trying to see here. So we talked about Ches Reeve. Um, finding a little bit of something there on uh, the la last time out. R Robbie Sh uh, Robbie Shelton was a guy. Um, Mac Meisner is a guy, 5,500. I think he's two top 25s or something, two top 28s or something. He's coming in strong. Uh, you know, you could always try out a little bit of David Lipsky. I don't know, man. Like, again, this is just your – you got to get really lucky, right? The um, the thing in the last week, one other thing we looked up, I'll say it quick here because it ties into this for those who don't watch the First Look show. If you don't, it's free. Go check it out. Ship it Nation YouTube station. You can find it there, our sponsor. But just go look. Um, there, we talked about it, Kenny. Like, Malnati was in the winning lineup last week. It turned out to be a 5 of 6 to win the 200K in the main lottery, even at 0.3%. So the diamond in the rough did get its way through, even in a 5 of 6. But they had to have, like, Xander, Mac Hughes, Cam Young. Like, it had the perfect nuts around it. So, with that said, the lineup right behind it, two and a half points away, no winner needed because if Malnati's only 0.3% owned. So, just like I always say, if you're going down here, take your stands, get enough that you can find a few outs to the top with it if you do get something like that right. Because even when the perfect storm happens and Malati gets What's enough, Tambo? What's enough? I'm just saying like- Like say and, you have 50 lineups. Yeah. Like, like what I never do exactly in the number, five, I'm I saying, usually do, what I do in the 5K and the 6K yeah. range, I usually do 10 to 15%. So I will have, I will have five- um, so like five to seven lineups, yeah. With these with these guys, I uh, like that's that. how there is, there is no magic formula, but I like what you just said, and I like I like where you're going with that because that's what I'm trying to explain. Don't come to me. I never go under ten percent you know, on any golfer I'm rostering ever, ever. Sure. But that should be the reason why, and also not spreading yourself too thin. But I'm saying what happens to me? People coming in the Discord. Oh man, I add Maldotti. Okay, how many lineups you play? Oh, I had 150. Okay, how many lines was he in? Well, he trickled into one, but still, if I had to just got this, this, and this, it's like, no. What's one? What's one? You're not going to get anywhere yeah. with it. Like, yeah, that's what the fuck is one? And I think you got to go 10%. Uh, I, th I don't think, I don't think when you, when you play GPPs, unless you're doing 150, if you're doing 150, then maybe you could drop that down to like 7%, maybe even 5%. Five right? to seven, but, yes. It just keeps yeah. something where you can yeah. have a few if minutes. If you're going 150, <laughs> if you're playing 50 like I am, I'm playing 40 now. Uh, so 40, I'm doing... Four to six lineups minimum for every single golfer that I, I you know, that's going to be my lowest owned of the week. Unless your process is the same. I mean, your process should be similar every week for how you do things, what you do, 
should be totally different because it should depend on different factors and all these other things, what the rest of the field's doing. We're playing a game of DFS, so it doesn't matter. There's people that know nothing about golf and could still win it, or I could win at NASCAR when I don't know, even watch NASCAR. It's things like that. But to your point, it's like there's other people that do just say, okay, I'm taking a stand. Uh, like, I like Hayden Springer, and I'm putting Hayden Springer with my favorite five guys. At least then you know if it works, it works. If your five guys hit and your Springer hit, shot hits, great. But that's different than what we're talking about. That's like, okay, you do the same thing every week with your five guys, uh, your one guy, and then your top five, and then you know if it doesn't hit, it never would have because you were only playing it that way. But for the most people, even if you're doing 20 max, 18, the $10 18 max, and you're just putting three or four lineups um, at a time and you're building them, put the same guy in into those three. And in the next batch, he's not in it. And so on so Then you still get some outs to the top and different combinations with that player. So I think that's just the final thing for me, nothing else in the 5K range. So I have my final Cascade Cornerstone in here because I have Scheffler up top. Um, I still wanted, I don't have any other 6K guys. Um, I have Scheffler, a 9K, three 7Ks, and this bomb down below. I'm going Rafael Campos at $5,300. Um, he's gained 12 strokes ball striking in his last three measured events, and that doesn't count the 18th place finish he had in Puerto Rico. Um, so, you know, in the last four events, he's been very, very solid uh, ball striking. That's why I like him. People reference Puerto Rico uh, as something that you've seen similar to leaderboards uh, on top of here. Totally different courses, right? But maybe because, you know, driver heavy type deal, long course, um, you know, don't, they're both that. Maybe that's why some of the leaderboards are fairly similar um, when it comes to Puerto Rico and here. So I'm going Rafael Campos at $5,300. And that's so I can fit. Scotty Scheffler at thirteen thousand, um, Alex Norin at ninety four hundred, Taylor Moore at seventy eight hundred, and um, Rafael Campos at fifty three hundred. That's going to leave you like fourteen seven, fourteen eight to fill out the rest of your lineups. You can go six K and eight K with that if you really wanted to. I'm probably going to go two seven K guys uh, in here, but we'll see. That could change. Um, so that's how that, those are my cash game cornerstones uh, for this week. I mean, just when you're looking at this 5K range, like JJ Spawn just seems like he should be doing better, but he's playing like straight asshole. So, I mean, seeing him at this price is a little shocking, but he's not been playing very well. But the thing is, again, long irons, pretty fucking good. Uh, so so I'll, I'll probably take a risk on him. Parker Cootie, um, I think he was like third in strokes game approach. Uh, last week, or he was top ten uh, in strokes and approach last week. Uh, he was he, he's hitting it solid. His iron play is very very good. He's not short uh, off the tee. He's basically like average in everything. And like if you can get a guy who's average in everything that's fifty what fifty seven hundred dollars, eh, I think that's worth a risk. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically it for me. And I'm definitely taking a little bit of a risk with Rafael Campos at fifty three hundred dollars. But I, I want Scotty, and I don't want to dig deeper. I don't want multiple guys under uh, 7K in my cash. So to be able to do that, it's sort of a punt play. But the guys have played good golf in his last four outings. Um, and yeah, he missed a cut of the valve spark, but it's because his putter didn't work. Um, he still hit the ball very, very well. Um, so, so that's what I'm going. Little starts and scrubs for my cash lineup. Tambo, uh, bets? I got two. I got uh, Akshay Batia. I bet him 55 with eight places. Uh, I kind of like that one. And then Billy Ho at the TC Ho. We got the Texas Children's Houston Open. That, that's Billy Ho, baby. 50 to one was the other guy I had there at eight places. So Billy Ho and Akshay Batia are the two that I have so far. I'm obviously not betting Scotty at three to one. As in, not that you shouldn't. I'm saying I, I'm obviously not. Then I'm adding, oh, like, I'm just not doing that. I think you bet Scotty or you bet your card, and you were going to talk about that anyway. So go ahead. But I would be betting the card this week. That's how I'm looking at it. So I don't know which way I'm going. I'm either going to bet Scotty at three to one and just call it a day and just make that my only bet for the week and just be done with it. Um, or I have a without Scotty card. Uh, that card is Jason Day, 20 to one. 
Billy Horschel, 35 to 1. All these with five places each way, except for Jason Day. Jason Day, I'm not going to do the five places, but Billy Horschel, 35 to 1, five places. Davis Thompson, I forgot to talk about him during the pod. I did like him a lot uh, this week. Uh, 66 to 1, five places. Thomas Detry, 66 to 1, five places. Taylor Pendrith, he's going to win at some point in time. The guy has too much skill. 90 to 1, five places. Goddard, 125 to 1, five places. Sam Stevens, 150 to 1, five places. Haven't decided which way I'm going. It's either going to be that without Scheffler card or it's going to be Scheffler and I'm done. We'll see. Check out my article on Gup's Corner on Wednesday. Tambo, tell them where they can find you. Oh, one and done. Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you got? One and done. I forgot about one and done. Uh, I had Cam Young last week, so not bad. Um, I think I might go Norin or Jason Day. Uh, Norin or Jason Day, I think. All right. I got Willie Z, and if I find out it's playing really easy, obviously, you know, I don't love Willie Z at Birdie Fest, or if it's going to be much softer, much easier, all that, then I'm going to go with uh, Akshay, who I bet as well. And like, But that's sort of where I'm at. I wanted that. I had Cam Young last week. I'll take it. it you know, climb me up a little bit, but not enough. So we'll see. Yeah, sounds good. You can find me on X at Kendo VT. You can find my article every week on gupscorner.com. Use promo code Kenny. Save yourself 30% on the membership to Gup's Corner. My article every week includes uh, you know, horse trends, stats to look for, final betting card, changes to my cash game, cornerstones, fade of the week, which has been money. Um, I think I've only had w- one fade of the week finish in the top 20 uh, so far, and it's all 8,500 uh, and above guys that I picked for my fade of the week. Also, my favorite GPP, my favorite single GPP play in each price range. Tampa, tell them where you can find you. Yeah, on X at Totag and Tambo. The tippets will be out on Wednesday, free as always. You can check out at Ship it Nation on X. Go see it's just been dominant. Go to the pinned tweet there. You'll see it from the showdown slates, especially. So use code Mayo. Go to ShipItNation.com. You get the classic slate. You get every there's PGA only packages. So 14 bucks for the week. You can pay like two dollars, uh, you know, for three, four dollars per event or whatever it is, one dollar a day for the month. Like there's lots of options. So go to ShipItNation.com. Go to Ship it Nation on X and you can see all the winners from last week, but it's been a lot of fun. Discord, great place to be, and we'll be back again, doing it all again next week for the Bolero Texas Open. Two weeks until the Masters. Oh, yeah. But we're still grinding on the other events as well, so let's win some motherfucking money. DJ Nation.